Good afternoon, and welcome back to another episode of The Scoop. My name is Carly Brewster. Some students do not know how to balance high school classes and sports for when it's time for college, but it's important to know your plan. Starting a sport early to be skilled by the time you enter high school is a smart idea that many athletes do. This can be beneficial for when high school begins, and I am here to discuss athletics in high school and moving to college to continue an athletic career. The ability to balance academic and outside schedules is a trait that many do not acquire. Today I am here to inform you on transitioning to college at an early start. My guest today has been playing tennis long before high school and has somehow found a way to balance her busy schedule. Full of academic priorities and intense tennis lessons all while searching for colleges. Sometimes finding, finding the right colleges for your academic abilities and athletic abilities can be difficult. Looking for colleges in your junior and senior year can be a stressful task that pains you to think about. Almost 70% of students in the U.S. go to college, and nearly 90% of students in Pennsylvania attend college. No matter how tedious searching for colleges sounds, it's important to start early. When you're unsure about who to talk to or where to start looking, the transition to college can seem stressful. Today I'm joined with Nina Dorenzo, a junior at Peters Township High School and a current varsity tennis player. Nina is a part of the students who will be going to college very soon. So thank you for joining me today, Nina. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, I'd like to first start out by asking you when you started playing tennis and why you continued to play it until today. Um, basically, I started playing tennis as soon as I could hold a racket because my mom was just obsessed with it. Like, she started out when she was older, and she wanted us to start when we were young. And um, I continued playing, and at first it was just like, oh, it's kind of fun. I'll do this. I wasn't great. And then, like, fifth, sixth grade, that's whenever I got serious and started taking lessons mm -hmm. and started putting the time and effort in. And um, who helped you to get where you are today? Um, my mom <laughs> and my coach, Paul Scrock. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Paula. Um, but that's the, my sister. She always pushed mm -hmm. me. So she also plays tennis. Unfortunately. So it, <laughs> it seems like some sort of like trait that everyone in your family plays tennis. Am I right? That is accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, how far did you think you would get in your future with tennis? Nowhere. <laughs> like I had no coordination at all and I couldn't do like I wasn't the talented person my sister was at the time like she just was naturally good at it I worked at it okay so this is something you've developed over time yeah and it seems to pay off because um, this year in our season we made it to Whippeals yeah we did <laughs> it was a great time <laughs> so um, while we were at Whippeals I know this is your junior year and it's a you have a pretty busy schedule uh, what kind of classes did you have this year and uh, how were they different from last year um, this year I'm taking three AP classes as well as um, all honors courses and they're all very rigorous and time consuming. So last year it was a little bit more laid back even though I was still in all honors it was a lot more manageable for me playing tennis and taking it but I found a way. I have a lot of help from people like again my sister helps me with my homework sometimes and I go to tutoring mm -hmm. as much as I can to help keep my grades up to the standards that I want them to be at. Mm -hmm. I know it's really hard to balance everything. Mm -hmm. um, so if other students have a busy schedule like you, full of work, tennis, academics, and obviously an outside life, um, what kind of tips can you give to them to kind of keep their grades up? Um, don't procrastinate. <laughs> That's the worst thing you could do. And I'm saying that as a procrastinator. And um, I would also recommend if you're struggling in a course, find a person or a tutor that you can get to help you bring up your grades and keep up with all the work that you have. Um, and if you know what you're capable of and sign up for classes that are more rigorous than you can handle, just know your abilities and like try not to stress yourself out to the point where you break, <laughs> essentially. Okay. So um, I know that you're playing tennis next year because it'll be your senior year mm -hmm. on the varsity team. Um, what are you thinking about sports college-wise? Um, I, <laughs> I haven't really put that much thought into it because I want to go to higher level schools. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And they are usually D1 schools, and I'm definitely not at a D1 level. 
But if I were to go to like a D2 or D3 school, I would play for sure. Okay, so yeah. basically if the college you're going to kind of allows your schedule to have time to like do your academics and tennis, you'll, you'll go yeah. there. Okay. So um, I know that junior year is like everyone says it's the hardest year. Um, how do you think you would compare it to next year? Like academic-wise? Yeah. Do you um, think um, it'll be easier for you to play tennis and uh, do sports? Yeah, for sure. Because junior year, you're struggling with a lot of people. It's their first time taking AP classes. I know it was mine. And they don't exactly know what to expect. And it's kind of just all thrown at you at one day. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in senior year, you kind of already took your SATs. You have looked at the colleges you want to go to. You've applied to colleges. And it's just a little bit less work in that aspect but so it's kind of a year to relax and take a break before you leave and start college essentially mm -hmm. um okay so what kind of goals are you setting for yourself next year since it will be your last year on the tennis team and you want to make it your best one um i just want to have fun mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't want too much pressure i just think that this year the team bonded so much more than it had the year before that mm -hmm. and i just want it to keep bonding and Mm -hmm. having a great time. Uh, I was a freshman last year and I can definitely see that this year uh, it was a lot easier to communicate with the JV and the varsity because it was like mm -hmm. we were a whole group. Yeah, it wasn't like two separate teams, which is really cheesy to say, but we were like all one team, yeah. even though we weren't in the same places at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that was like really nice to have to have happen. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like uh, yourself to achieve individually next year? Um, like tennis wise? Mm -hmm, yeah. I would like to keep my spot at line one doubles, maybe. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I don't have too many goals. So uh, no really, no progression. Just kind of keep your spot and just have a good season. Yeah, because next year there are a lot of really talented people coming out, mm -hmm. like Catalina Wang. Yeah. And she's just going to really <laughs> shake things up. Yeah, I know. It'll be good to have the freshmen come in, though. A couple of them will probably make varsity, which is really good since mm -hmm. we lost Carla this year she's going to college sorry I miss you Carla <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so uh, what age did you really think that you wanted to take tennis seriously and join the team and be where you are today probably around fifth grade mm -hmm. and how determined were you to get where you are today what kind of um, mm. work have you put in um, I kind of go through up and down like spouts with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll be like, yes, let's go play tennis consistently for two or three months and then like I'll just take a four month break. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I think it's good to have a break though, you know? Yeah, it just is. So it's really nice. Mm -hmm. But I I can't like think about what I want to, how I want to phrase it. I mean, I've definitely put in a lot of work over the years, mm -hmm. even with those dry spouts, but it's, it's taken a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, this is my first year in varsity and it was really nice coming up to see all the other girls. Um, what does it take to make varsity? Um, just play your game mm -hmm. and like don't doubt yourself. Um, I know my freshman year I went in there and I was like oh there's no way I'm gonna make varsity and when you go in with that I'm not gonna do it mentality you're not gonna do it like that's what happened with me I didn't make it mm -hmm. but um, I'd say just work at it <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what what did you like better your varsity uh, years playing tennis or your um, junior varsity years that's that's tricky because JV was so much fun. Mm -hmm. I had Mrs. I had Coach Smelko the first year for mm -hmm. her first year, and it was so much fun. And I loved everybody on the team. Mm -hmm. And then my first year on varsity, it was a little bit different because there were people I wasn't familiar with, and they weren't exactly a welcoming group <laughs> per se. Okay. But um, this year it was so much better, and it was just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, varsity, the competition level really increases. Because, mm -hmm. like, you can make it to whoopials and everything like that. So um, why do you think that the comp competition level for varsity is so high compared to the JV? And do you think that um, the JV teams should kind of meet the standards of varsity? Or do you think there should still be a gap between the two? Um, I think that no matter what you do, there's probably going to be a gap between your JV and varsity because varsity is your school's strongest players. 
and JV is like we're working at it mm -hmm. essentially and I think JV is amazing mm -hmm. I love them and um I don't know I think that the competition level for varsity is so difficult because it is the school's best like every line one player has worked very hard to get where they are mm -hmm. especially in schools like North Allegheny mm -hmm. and um Mount Lebanon mm -hmm. they all are very hard working people and they dedicate their lives to tennis which is something that kind of needs to happen if you want to play at that level mm -hmm. and um I know definitely the JV did really well this year and said in varsity and um, there's a lot of parents on the sidelines kind of coaching us on mm -hmm. and like being very supportive. So uh, what did your parents say about you thinking about playing a sport in college? Um, they told me to try and balance it out because I want to go into the medical field when I go to college. Mm -hmm. And that's a very rigorous thing to do. And adding a sport on top of it could just like make it a lot harder. Mm -hmm. So they just told me to be wary. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of lessons have your parents teach you from, or taught you, excuse me, <laughs> from your past, ex uh, from their past experience in um, college about balancing your schedules and times? Um, my mom actually played field hockey for Pitt, mm -hmm. and she was, um, she just told me, do your work and don't procrastinate, and you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And my dad. Actually, I don't think he played any sports. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was he was a nerd, and um, he just he got straight A's all through college, all through mm -hmm. high school, went to med school, mm -hmm. and he just told me to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so some of your, uh, one of your parents have played a sport, and the other hasn't. So um, in high school, has there ever been a time where you were playing tennis and also doing your academics where you thought like I can't go to practice today? or like my schedule, there needs to be a break? Um, I've definitely thought that, but mm -hmm. I've never actually acted on those thoughts mm -hmm. because I know I can't spare that time. Like I can't miss a practice mm -hmm. and expect to go back and be exactly where I was the next time. Mm -hmm. I know that's a difficult thing to balance and um, there's also a lot of kids in our school who don't really know how to balance that. So um, what do you think that our school could do more to teach kids how to balance their schedules? Um, I think that our school is very high level with the academics and um, they push a lot of harder classes on you and they're just like, you should do this. I think that they should try and scale that back a little bit because it's mm -hmm. not all about the classes or the grades you get. It's about how hard you're working to do what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that like finding the balance is uh, more difficult in freshman year or junior year because I know that uh, freshman year you're new to the school but uh, junior year you have more of a workload. Um, I'd probably say junior year because there, there just is so much of a difference in the workload and I know my freshman year even with all the classes that I was taking it wasn't like hard for me to balance everything out. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you Nina. We're going to cut to a break but uh, when we get back we're going to talk to Nina more about what she plans to do in high school. Uh, at the end of her high school career and in college. Together we can change the news. Find out how at safekids.org. Welcome back. I am joined with Nina Dorenzo, a junior at Peter Township High School and a current varsity player. Um, so Nina, based on uh, your time on the varsity tennis team, uh, what has your family told you about um, their experience? Because uh, I know your mom is a tennis coach. So what has she told you about her experience um, coaching the other girls? She loves it. Mm -hmm. I was the main problem with everything. <laughs> she loves everyone on the team. She had a really great time. Mm -hmm. And I think she wants to do it again next year. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for saying that. <laughs> OK, and um, uh, what does she notice about how the other girls go on balancing their schedules compared to uh, the way that you do it? 
I think that she really thinks that everyone's doing a great job with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. She has never had a person like have to sit out of a match because they're not doing their work or they're not caught up in school. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a very laid back person in mm -hmm. general. And I feel like she thinks that whatever you're capable of and to the like you have to do whatever you have to do to the best of your abilities and she will understand that mm -hmm. yeah okay I think that's really great for like um, that kind of bonding where they realize that you know everyone's kind of doing their own thing and it's all working out so um, on the topic of coaches have you been uh, talking to any college coaches yet and um, if so uh, why do you think it's important to talk to college coaches early I haven't personally, but I know Mia Hoffbauer has talked to a few of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really, if you want to play in college, it's really beneficial to build that relationship with a coach to um, say, I want to go to the school and I want to play on your team. Will you please consider me mm -hmm. and show them your strengths and your weaknesses and just create that connection that you need to have. Mm -hmm. I know that's really important. Um, why do you think uh, students take around a year, two years to kind of look into colleges? Um, it's just a very stressful idea. Like you're leaving what you're comfortable with mm -hmm. for a long period of time. And mm -hmm. even though it's an exciting thing, it's also very nerve wracking and anxiety provoking. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's colleges that come and do college fairs at other schools and even our school sometimes. Um, have you ever visited those? Um, if not, <laughs> do you think that um, students should go there to see uh, what colleges they might consider or what colleges they'd like to el eliminate? I mean, I don't think it would hurt a person to go to the college fair. I think that going to the campuses is good, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if you know you have had that school in your mind for a long time, like I've had Pitt in my mind, mm -hmm. let's go Pitt. And I would rather go visit their campus than go to a college fair and talk to like a representative mm -hmm. okay. and like tour, you know? Because mm -hmm. some colleges really like to see you going there and taking tours of their campus. Okay. So um, why have you been considering Pitt for these like past few months? Oh, um, my sister goes there mm -hmm. and my cousin goes there. <laughs> my mom went there. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just always been a big thing. Like, we're a pit family. We have okay. a crap ton of pit stuff. <laughs> and um, it's just a really great school. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a really big, but it's really, it's rigorous, but not to the point where you're like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. It pushes people to be better. And I know your sister, who um, played for the tennis team, who mm -hmm. goes to pit. Um, I know that it was like, probably a difficult transition to go from a senior in high school to a freshman in college. So um, do you know what her experience has been like and if there's any tips that she's given you? Um, she's been transitioning for a while. It's not an easy thing to do because mm -hmm. even though it's close to home, it's still like you aren't in a familiar environment. Mm -hmm. You have to talk to new people. You have to, you don't know if you like your roommate or not because even if you meet them online, it's like, do I really like you? Mm -hmm. And um, I think she's still adjusting, mm -hmm. but she's learning to balance her time better okay. and not waiting till the last minute to do all of her projects mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, is this time balance for her something that she learned in high school or in college? And um, if it's something that she learned in college, what do you think the school can do to kind of teach kids early on that this is something you should learn in mm -hmm. high school? I think she's always kind of struggled with it. She still does. I don't really think she is a great time budgeter. Mm -hmm. um, she, I don't, like it's not a skill that she's learned through people. She just works into the long hours of the night. Mm -hmm. But I think that our school could just, I don't really know. They tell us not to procrastinate, but mm -hmm. we don't really listen. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just like you have to tell yourself you got to do this and you can't keep pushing it off. Mm -hmm. And that can be really difficult when it comes to homework and stuff like that. Especially so English homework because reading is not fun. <laughs> so um, have you talked to any of your teachers about um, what maybe they did in college and then that kind of influenced you to decide what you wanted to do? 
No. <laughs> no? Okay. I have not. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, are there any clubs that you do outside of school that maybe correspond to clubs you would do in college or a career that you would do in college? Um, I'm in NHS, if okay. that counts as a club. Yeah. Um, and I just joined Law and Gov Club, and it's really fun. It's mm -hmm. time-consuming, mm -hmm. which I didn't expect when <laughs> I went into it, mm -hmm. but that's fine. <laughs> and um, why did you join these clubs knowing that junior year was going to be one of the hardest years? And Colleges like coaches. to see extracurriculars. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. They, also my friend Danny Isaac forced me to do it, so <laughs> that's why I did that. And NHS was like, eh, I got asked to go there. I, I guess I should try. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you looking to get any academic or uh, athletic scholarships? And if so, do you know what kind? you're looking for not necessarily not necessarily athletic scholarships mm -hmm. because I don't think I, I'm like at the level okay but um so academically I would apply for them mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I don't really know what they'd be for I know that mm -hmm. the Italian American scholarship is one that my family has done in the past and mm -hmm. won mm -hmm. and I don't really know. I have to look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know uh, looking for scholarships and applying for them takes a long time, which um, a lot of kids do look into at the end of their junior year. Mm -hmm. um, but to kind of take it back a few steps, uh, when you first started playing tennis, which was long before high school, uh, what was the goal you had right before freshman year when you, about, when you were about to join the team? Um, I just wanted to do my best. And mm -hmm. I beat my sister, so that was kind of fun, too. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of influence um, did your parents have between you and your sister? Because I know uh, the way you learned tennis was, like, two very different ways. So how did they uh, manage to help you both, even though it was um, so diverse? Um, my mom and my sister play very similar games. They're both, like, scrappy players. They never had, like, Julia had training, mm -hmm. but my mom didn't, and she plays more, like, my mom, like she lobs it and mm -hmm. she doesn't, she goes for the right shots at the right time. Mm -hmm. I play like my dad, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I go for shots at the wrong times, but I think that that's how we balanced it out. I worked more with my mom and she worked wor more with my dad and like we all mm -hmm. balanced each other out. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the stress like during the tennis season, which is about from August to October compared to the rest of the year? Because I know finals are in the spring, so. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know. I'm kind of just a stressed person in general. Like, mm -hmm. if you talk to me, I'm probably stressed about something. <laughs> and I think that even though I have more time to do stuff, I'm like, oh, I have more time to do stuff. Instead mm -hmm. of, like, during the tennis season, I was like, okay, I have to get this done, this done, this done, this done. Mm -hmm. So... I think I'd actually be less stressed. Also, I was getting exercise every day then. Now I'm not. <laughs> um, so what are some benefits of playing on the varsity team your junior and senior year? Um, I, I guess it just lets you get to know the people better. Mm -hmm. And it's more competitive than it is in JV. So it lets you see how the people you would play in college play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, for other tennis players out there who are probably in their gen uh, excuse me, junior or senior year, um, what can they do to improve their game those two years that colleges are going to be looking at? Um, practice, mm -hmm. because the more you play, the more you'll be in like the groove of things. Like if you take super long breaks in between when you play, you kind of lose that momentum you had at that point. Mm -hmm. I know I play um, all year round, uh, so what kind of like tournaments or other like ways of playing tennis do you partake in during the off season? Um, I go to clinics a lot, mm -hmm. not recently, but usually I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I go to Glen Creek, you go to Peters. Mm, yeah. Nerd. <laughs> um, but I, I don't really mm -hmm. play tournaments. I would recommend doing that though because mm -hmm. clinics are more like working on your strokes, you have like five minutes of serving and tournaments are like you play matches with people mm -hmm. and it helps you get into that mode for the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know that the Peter Township Tennis Center offers clinics. If you just like walk in, you can sign up. Mm -hmm. So what's it like to sign up for clinics at Glen Creek? 
pretty much the same. It's just a little bit farther away. Mm, okay. They're very similar people, like similar places. Because like the two people who really run everything, Mike and Paul, mm -hmm. they used to work at Peter's. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's the difference between Glen Creek and uh, Peter's Township Clinics? Because I know that a lot of our tennis players are kind of split down the middle between both. Um, I think that Glen Creek kind of has that upper level of players because I know Peter's has a lot of younger kids coming into the clinics that aren't really as experienced. They're putting them in like advanced clinics when they should probably be in like intermediate clinics and mm -hmm. they're playing with high schoolers and it's not as competitive as it would be at Glen Creek. You should come. <laughs> I'll definitely think about it. <laughs> so um, why are you still undecided about um, playing a sport in college? Um, because I know it has to do with your schedule and everything. Yeah. But um, the fact that you haven't talked to any college coaches yet is kind of different from other girls that I've been talking to. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot more pressure mm -hmm. in college than it would be in high school because in high school you're just like oh I'm having fun and in college you're like oh this is kind of real mm -hmm. um, I do know people who play love it like Sarah Comer goes to University of Delaware and she loves it mm -hmm. and um, it really helped change her game from what they traditionally teach you in lessons and clinics to a, a like less conventional way that made her win she's like number one on her team mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I just don't, I haven't really put that much thought into it yet. Yeah. So I haven't like talked to coaches. That's the reason why I'm just kind of an indecisive person in general. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come interview oh, yeah. today. <laughs> uh, that is all the time we have for today. We've learned about the process of transitioning to college and how it benefits high school students. The amount of work that goes into the end of your high school athletic career has proven to be a challenging task. Preparing for college is time consuming, but today's interview with Nina should have shed some light on why you should prepare earlier. It's important to get advice from others, including your family, because looking for colleges is something that you shouldn't do alone. The more help that you have from your family and the school, the easier it will be to look for colleges, benefiting your athletic and academic abilities. Not only is it challenging to continue a sport in high school that you would like to pursue in college, but there has to be a happy medium when it comes to the balancing of academics. Nina has told us how she balances her athletic and academic career and how it has affected her through her three years of high school. Finding a balance between academic and athletic is, athletics is different for everyone, but it's important to find what works for you before it's time to apply to colleges. Thank you for joining us today on another episode of The Scoop.